Like the judge said, pornography may be hard to define, but I know it when I see it. Ordinary pornography is just ordinary and doesn't concern me. I don't pay any attention to it anyway. I might admit to an appreciation of certain skills, say, when a woman can shoot a ping pong ball into a shot glass from 10 feet. But the horizontal hula trampoline act of people bouncing up and down on each other, as if there were some reason for them to be so excited, escapes me. I'm also something of a critic as far as the art of the procedure goes. There's an old joke about three young French boys watching a couple making love through a window. One boy is 12, one is 10, and one is six years old. The youngest asks, what are they doing? The 10-year-old responds, they're making love. Yes, and badly, adds the 12-year-old. So I guess I'm a critic at the way people perform sex. Well, they don't know who they're having sex with in the first place, and they don't know who they are. So it boils down to groping in the dark, and caring and focus are at war with the urgency of passion. Goats pissing all over themselves prior to coitus. You see this everywhere, all the time. You see it on the highway, in the fashion that people drive. You see it in the supermarket lines. More than half the people perpetually look like they have to take a leak. They're in a state of urgency to get somewhere, but when they get there, what happens? What happens when they get there? Where is there? They never get there. There is a place that retreats before desire. The heat of desire drives it away, so there dangles forever. Out of reach. Until urgency has been replaced by control, and control comes through love, which places all of its emphasis on the loss of self in the beloved. Everything is under control of the eternal master of life, and that is love. Before the highest expression of love, everyone automatically bows their head, knowing or unknowingly, because it is the source of life and the ultimate destination. There's a tarot card called the Hermit. Each major arcana card, of which there are 22, represents a planetary influence or a sense or a quality along with a great many other things. The sense associated with the hermit is the sense of touch and that is why mystics often talk of their interaction with the divine in erotic terms. Everything is sex which adds its higher arc transforms into love and at its highest arc is engaged with all life at all times. Each card is a book and as Eliphas Levi puts it in his book The Dogma and Ritual of High Magic, a prisoner devoid of books, had he only a tarot of which he knew how to make use, could in a few years acquire a universal science and converse with an unequal doctrine and inexhaustible eloquence. Meanwhile, People attempt to read these cards to tell the future when the means of changing it is in their hands. Priorities? There are so many examples of similar confusions where the glitter of a semi-precious stone of dubious value masks the presence of something priceless. Some things you can't see for so long as your values are terrestrialized. I've got another litmus test and this is the first time I've talked about it. It's the Holocaust litmus test. I'm bringing it up because all sorts of nasty nonsense is rearing its anti-Gentile head. New heights of ridiculousness are being scaled daily. My secret litmus test is called the Holocaust litmus test. The truth doesn't do mercy fucks, and when you think that's what you're getting, 
it hurts. Why it hurts, I will leave to the imagination of the one experiencing it. I'm still waiting for someone to explain to me how Dwight Eisenhower, Winston Churchill and Charles de Gaulle could write tens of thousands of post-war memoirs and never mention death camps or crematoriums. I'm waiting for someone to explain how taking off over three million from the death count at Auschwitz does not affect the number of six million as the official tally. There are a lot of statistics I would love to have explained to me, but no one seems to be able to. I'm especially interested in how the world population for a certain demographic actually went up during the war years. The consensus reports a trend that can't possibly be true, but it has to be. It's the law. From the moment I first heard David Skarbina speak, I said to myself, He's off. Something's just not right with this fellow. There are other writers that have been around for a while who are bigged up about the Palestinian rights, but who set my teeth on edge. It's not because their writing lacks any kind of passion or fire, although that is the case. It's something behind the front agenda that creates a disconnect between what I'm being told and what I'm feeling. I'm mystified as to why there are so few voices and almost none among those who could actually make a difference that will stand up and call this masquerade for what it really is. It's one of the most cynical and manipulative efforts in the whole of history and millions of people are freeloading on it and adding their own fantastic and impossible tales to the mix. They are striving to outdo each other in the theater of the ridiculous and they've got no shame or hesitation concerning it. Is it some kind of genetic insanity that travels along particular bloodlines, or is it the close proximity to so much money that only requires the use of a slanderous title or the threat of public injury to one's persona to have wheelbarrows of cash pull up at the door? Yeah, it's a money machine and it just keeps expanding like McDonald's franchises. So that there's a McHolocaust outlet somewhere near you, in case you're looking for ideas on how to support your family in these trying times, in large part brought to you courtesy of the same people. Far be it from me to deny the Holocaust because there very definitely was one and it was performed on the German people as much as anyone of the time. It was performed on them by the Zionist-run Soviet army on the one hand and the Zionist-controlled US on the other. And it was from there that the war was first declared on Germany by the Neo-Pharisees. They were all hot and bothered because Hitler was none too pleased about what was happening to the German economy or in the cabaret society of Berlin. This is how the Holocaust should be remembered, as something that happened to the German people as much as to anyone else, and that the Zionists who refused to let aid packages through to those in the camps were the same Zionists who wouldn't let the Red Cross even into the gulags in Russia, and that given the tens of millions they killed in Russia, it makes perfect sense that whatever happened in World War II was a minor payback for much larger crimes. Of course, they threw other members of the tribe under the bus in order to orchestrate an imprimatur for the Rothschild banking syndicate called Israel. In the words of Ben Gurion and so many others, it didn't matter how many Jews had to die in the camps as long as they could get their hands on Palestine, which at the time was somebody else's country. This was a land with people on it, for people who wanted to steal the land, and that's what Zionism and neo pharisaism is all about. The whole story is more pornographic than The Devil and Mrs. Jones, and could probably be called 
the devil does Palestine. I know Holocaust pornography when I see it. It's dressed up as a religion and as firmly based in reality as that thing in Masada. It is meant to make us talk in whispers from Sub Rosa land because telling the truth can get you into trouble and ruin your life, which is why people are more comfortable selling themselves into slavery in order to avoid the problems that telling the truth might cause. Try holding people up to this litmus test and see what it gets you. If denying the Holocaust is a crime, don't deny it. There was a Holocaust and the truth was burned alive along with integrity, honor and a whole lot of their friends who were staying over at the time. There was a Holocaust. Millions of Germans got exterminated and also some Jews, gypsies, homosexuals and political malcontents. The Holocaust happened and it was no more or less of a Holocaust than any of the rest of the Holocausts caused by those claiming exclusive rights to this one. I can feel my eyes moisten at the mountains of hair that was shaved from heads to make cushions, pillows, something or other. Actually, the hair, this holy relic, was shaved to control the spread of lice. Is it against the law to say that? The Holocaust is a religion whose intent is to blackmail the world for as long as it can be maintained. It's a racket where Paul Bunyan would feel right at home. It's a French braid of stories woven from single hairs that have no problem contradicting each other as long as it's not you doing the contradicting and the empire of deception that is built on top of it is going to be one of the main casualties of the apocalypse along with the rest of the carrot and stick realities that rule this world. Success in this world may very well be measured to the degree that one trumpets the tales of those who used the money garnered to buy up every vehicle for wider expression and then, and then, along came the internet. <laughs>